come across that as I was setting stuff up, and I was like, bam, that's my color palette. Whoopsie daisy. Didn't mean to knock her off. Welcome to the studio today as I am collecting inspiration before I get started on this project today. It's okay, friend. All right, I've had in my mind a particular piece that I created in my journal a couple of years ago. It actually was in 2020. I was recovering from melanoma surgery and was spending some time in my journal as I healed and just regrouped after dealing with that. Uh, so I knew what I was looking for, but I couldn't quite put my hands on it. So these pieces that I'm collecting will be my inspiration. Um, so that was a color palette I just pulled out. And then this is something I saw on Pinterest. So I have the Pinterest picture and then the two journal pages and then the color, color palette that you saw me get out there. And so now I'm going to look through all my paints and see if I can match those up that was on that color palette sheet. This video process of creating this piece is literally my start process from the beginning to the very end. So it's kind of a long journey and I film it over a course of a few days. So if you want to see the full fledged meal deal, stick around for the entire video. But again, I do apologize that it is a lengthy video, but I wanted to take the opportunity to share with you my process literally from start to finish and um, also to honor the month of February for Valentine's Day and create a piece including hearts.
What I'm doing here now is collecting pieces from my junk drawer with all my paper pieces and I'm looking for actual pieces that resemble the color palette that I am going to be working with. I knew from the very beginning of this project that I wanted to include different mediums in this project, meaning I want to have a paint bottom base and then I will move into adding actual scraps of paper within the color palette and then build on top of more paint and even add some glitter towards the end of this project because I knew by looking at one of my inspiration pieces out of my journal it included the glitter so I knew that I would include that in this project as well. I hope that you are inspired by this particular project and piece that I'm creating in honor of the month of February for Valentine's Day. Although it is a lengthy process, I hope that you are inspired and maybe you can create something of your own getting ready for Valentine's Day or just in general. I'm continuing to go through these pieces as the further I get back in my junk drawer here, my pieces get bigger. But in just a second, I'm going to get my next bucket out that has even bigger pieces. And not just because I pull every single one of these pieces out does it mean that it's going to end up on this uh, project here. Those are the pieces that I cut up from the paper that came from my art table where I cleaned up from my last video. I was thinking that I might want to include one of these in this project, but a little hint, I didn't end up using it. This process can tend to be a little slow but it also goes to show the importance of keeping your stash, you know, up to par of keeping a certain amount, even if you think, oh, I'm not going to use that. Honey, let me tell you, at any given moment, you can, you can actually put something to use. So if you don't have a section of papers like this gathered, I promise you, you could probably walk through your house right now and literally accumulate enough to have one project and then keep them on hand for projects moving forward. These papers right here I typically get like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby and then that very last page I had created myself with uh, leaves. I don't know if you saw that back there. Okay, I'm probably going to leave you here for a little bit at um, this stage in the journey just for you to enjoy the creating process as I'm about to get ready to start applying to my piece of cardboard here. Yes, I said cardboard. I'm all about recycling, so any chance I can get, I'm going to create something on a piece of cardboard. But if you have any questions uh, about my process or anything, please comment below. I would love to hear your insight about, you know, any question that you may have or something that you see that I do that you do or just, you know, anything you would like to share with me. I'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to skip out here for a little bit. I will be back with you here soon. So enjoy this part until then.
As today's paint process wraps up, I just wanted to speak to you when last time I will be back the following day to do the next layering. Um, some people and most people, if they look at this, may think, oh, well, that's good and like the base layer, but I personally don't like to stop there. I like to continue on and keep adding, adding, adding to my pieces where they have layers after layers. So I'm going to skedaddle so I can get dinner ready for the family. And you will see this day come to an end here. And then I will be back with you uh, in the next day filming. You'll see me when I enter back into the studio. And just like that, a piece can change. I was trying to salvage that leftover paint. It was too much left on the palette to just for it to go to waste. So I tried to get it back in the tube and it didn't quite work out. So here is my process. And I ended up keeping that piece there. And it dried up really nicely. I can't wait to use it in a journal one day. Next day, entering the studio as I walk around to take a peek at the paint dried here on the cardboard to see what I think about it for the day. This day it was extremely cold in the studio, so I had my heat running. You probably can hear it in the background, but it eventually turns off. I tried to get the running effect. I like to do that a lot, like on canvas and what have you, but this particular day on this cardboard, it didn't work out, so I decided to carry on. But my process of creating kind of goes up and down, up and down. One minute I like it, the next minute I don't. And so therefore, you just keep creating. I add a few more small brush strokes here and then I carry on and will begin putting paper down actually today. Finally, the heat turned off.
next day. Let me share with you right now what I'm thinking and feeling, okay? I've had my inspiration pieces sitting out here, and it's three bodies of piece of work that was mine. One that was just a color palette that I had stuck over here in my watercolor thing, which, I mean, was acrylic paint. But I, I use these things, and then I just love the way they look, so I keep them so one day I'll stuck it over there. And I found it the other day when I was getting ready to see what was going to be inspiring me, and I come across that as I was setting stuff up, and I was like, bam, that's my color palette. And I had one other piece that I was inspired by, but that was on my iPad, and I don't have my iPad with me today, but it too really was an effort. When I was creating this, I couldn't even get that piece that I saw on, it was a, a, a painting I saw on Pinterest. I wasn't feeling it. I was feeling it more from my own stuff. So the other piece was this that I created in a journal one year, whenever I was doing daily creations. <clears throat> and it always kind of stood out to me as one of my favorite. And I said, I just, I really want to look back on that one day when I'm created and be inspired by it. And then this is in a journal. I can't even tell you what year. I, I'm not good about marking my stuff. I know I should be, but anyway, um, I just randomly put things in this journal that I have been collecting. And it has always stood out to be one of my favorite things I created and there's things about it that I don't like there's things that I do like I think it's just the fact of that I was able to take a bunch of junk and get to the point that it felt good to me and I actually keep it uh, set and displayed in my studio that I looked at look at uh, regularly um so anyway that's that I share all of that to say that's what I've been pulling from to be inspired, you know, the color palette, things about this one that I like, things about this I like, and this is not a finished product, I'm not done, but I want to say what I, what I am feeling as I walk in here today to check on this piece after letting it dry overnight and everything. I can create a piece in one day and you know, have a good, good final ending. But a lot of times my work, whether it be in a journal or you know, something of this size in cardboard or canvas or what have you, I, I like to create on it a little bit and then walk away and, and regain my thoughts. So my first reaction when I walked in studio today through my door, looking at it across like where you are right now, I saw it. And as I rounded this table and I get over here and I look at it, I'm not liking it. I'll just be honest with you. It looks like I'm not to the professional point of my own liking, but that's part of creating. I, I have to get messy like nobody's business. Messy all on this background. I mean, you watched all of it. And then, and then yesterday, which would have been a footage you just got through watching, I started just piling, piling stuff on here, and then I needed it to dry. So I'm ready to dive deep back in and see what we can make this thing, because I'm telling you something. By the time it's over with, it's going to be a beauty. But I just wanted to share where I was in this process of what I was thinking and what I was feeling, because I ain't feeling this. That's how you know when you need to keep going. I'm ready to dive in here and get some more marks and paint and and what have you on here to get to the bottom of this okay we're over, back over here and i'm feeling like i want to add some more things to this so i have dug out a few things and I, I knew yesterday whenever i walked away from it i didn't have enough of anything that had blue in it you know uh that was paper shapes or what have you and then i'm wondering if i don't if i might just want a little piece of book page in there um but I don't know, we're going to see, and you're probably thinking, Lord, Ashley, I don't know if you need to ha add anything else, but man, I, I can't help myself, so we're going, we're fixing to see what happens here, okay? Um, I'm not real sure. We're just going to take a peek. 
my neighbors are having a roof put on their house and my darn dog keeps hearing those people over there. So if you end up hearing my dog bark, I apologize. She's not, not happy about the extra, extra people around today. You know, sometimes you don't want to put something on there that's going to cover up something else. But then, sometimes, man, you may see something and you just want to go for it. I kind of like that. I like how that shows through there, but I don't like how that covers that up. Let's, let's see what else we can come up with. The whole point of this series is kind of to be doing something for Valentine's Day, so let's cut out a heart and see what happens. Lord, that's going to be a big one. Let's look at this. This is old envelopes, the inside. My husband picks on me for keeping this kind of stuff, but Phil, you got to get what you can. When you see something that inspires you and you gravitate, you grab it. And if I sat around and listened to all the people who picked on me in my life about stuff, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be doing the things I'm doing. Let me know if you can hear the people working on that roof. I just heard them banging on something. I try to sometimes refrain from being so in control. I try to just put it out there. But then sometimes, I mean, you, you really got to be intentional with stuff. And then another thing I struggle with is you sit there and you'll look at something. And then by the time you pick it back up to cut what you need, you don't forgot where you had it. Okay, Ashley, you need to be making your final selection here, honey. It just feels like if I do that, something's still missing. All right, we're just going to have to go with it. We're fixing to glue these pieces down, and and maybe the missing pieces are the paint and the pencils and all the good stuff that this and come behind. So let's go on and get this on here. Sometimes you keep forgetting where you put something. If you'll just kind of raise it up a little bit and get what you can glued down to where some of it at least stays where you want it to be. But then if you've got it stuck up under something, that could create another problem. I still think that may have moved a little bit, but hey, we'll work with it. It's little things like that with the jagged edges 
and all the stuff that I really gravitate towards. Uh, let's see if we get these bad boys put in a good location. I really don't like using my fingers doing this because this mess will stick to you for days, but sometimes when you get working, you just got to do what you got to do. You just can't get it spread it out. You just kind of smush around with your finger. Not a big fan of that little yellow piece hanging out there, but it is what it is. So, all right, we got that down, got that down, got those two down. All right, I think I, as far as paper on it, it doesn't mean I'm liking the what this piece is right now. I still want to get more stuff on there, but um, I'm going to turn y'all off for just a second. I need to check my phone. My daughter's been in a meeting and um, going to be calling me afterwards, and I just need to make sure I hadn't missed her call. Uh, so I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, I'm back with you, but I want to tell you a funny. Earlier, not that time when I was checking to see about her, um, I needed to adjust something on my camera up here, which is actually my cell, uh, cell phone. It's a, a new, um, whatever the newest one is, I think maybe a 14 or something. I'm not real sure. I, you know, my other phone I, ha I had had for a long time, it was like a 7 or something. And so anyway, um, I was having some complications with it, and that's how why I had to upgrade. Um, I'm not all the time about having the latest, fancy, greatest of technology. But what I'm trying to tell you is, a while ago, I had to take it down for something to correct something. And when I did, I took it off this stand up here. And y'all, that phone on this clip up here, it popped out of my hand, and it almost landed in this bowl of water. I said, oh, Lord. I'm going to get myself in a mess if I ruin this phone off in that bowl. So I've really got to be careful what I do. But let's, um, I've gotten out some pencils and a uh, pen and what have you that I kind of want to do a little um, doodling around on here. I almost wonder if I don't want some markers. Let me grab my markers right quick. I'm not even sure why I didn't think of them a while ago, but let's see here. I really want like a... A deep blue, so to speak, but okay, we'll get that yellow and that green is that color. I really ain't had much luck finding what the, the brown. Let's look and see. Let me get my little color palette. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll go with that. I go with that. I'm not even sure how much I'll use it, but it's just annoying when you realize you hadn't had something and you're looking for it. Okay, and maybe an orange I really don't like that bright orange see that looks like that I want something more like that well I like how fluorescent that is I'll go with that you know I sometimes I can sit here and pull all these different colors markers pencils whatever I might not even use the darn things but I like to have them because when I get going all right what other color would I want I really want a, something to do with blue because I feel like I'm not, I want that deep blue like that. Yeah, that might get served for it. Okay, I'll go with those. I don't want a whole slew of them to begin with, but, you know, if you watched, <laughs> if you watched my cleaning video that I did just not long ago, man, if you could see this place now, I mean, it doesn't take long to, to get back under attack <laughs> with all these supplies and what have you. I sometimes wonder if I need this little lamp on over here. Let's see. Or is that kind of too annoying? I think it's good for me, but it's not good for y'all on camera. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it be and I'll have to work in the dark. So when I mess up, we can say, well, Ashley was working in the dark, so she couldn't see. Trying to get me a few sips of my coffee in. I'm late getting started on it, but that's okay too. All right, during this time, I just kind of I get in here and I just start kind of tinkering, so you can just kind of watch the process. I like to get close to, I'll find the colors, you know, and get close and kind of doodle a little more and add to it, you know, give it a little more detail or something else. Something just to add to make it extra that you didn't quite get done with the paint because that's not the way paint works. You get what you get. And I know you're probably thinking, well, golly, Ashley, we hardly can even see anything. But I'm telling you, in the end, 
when you get done with your final product and you look, you know, you sit and you look and you start looking at things very closely and you see the certain things that are popping out, you will be very thankful. Some things may not be noticed, but there will be others, okay? And so then I get kind of where I'll hold it at a weird angle and I get to scribbling. That way you can add some detail. Kind of like how I did here with the paintbrush. I got a little squiggly. I mean, who wants anything boring? And like anything else, at some point you gotta think, okay, am I done with that one? And I think I am done with that one. Doesn't mean you can't come back to it. There's always time to come back. Sometimes you may go lightly with the color and other times you may get more aggressive. And if you're working on a piece and you get to that point and you feel like, man, I just do not like this. Kind of like I told you earlier, I did not like this piece. I felt like it, it just was junk, basically. But I'm telling you, I think, I did not mean for that to happen. I think that is why so many people give up when they're creating, is they get to that junks phase and they think, oh my goodness, this will never be anything. This is not worth anything. I'm done. I'll never do this again. You ain't gotten to the finished product. If you're or if you're thinking and feeling that way about some stuff, honey, you ain't worked on it long enough. And if you would work on it, you would see and you would be so darn proud and happy and excited and you'd never quit creating. Because it, a lot of times it's not about all the markings that goes on. It's the thought process. It's the energy that you're releasing. It's the feelings the thought process behind the whole work. And you just haven't gotten to the good stuff. You're really doing yourself a disservice. If that's the case, you know. Now, you may choose to skip doing this type of process of putting all these extra markings. And that's fine too, but... Oh, crazy lady Ashley here. She she wants it all. I mean, I, I'm just a mess maker. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I, I gotta see what I can get. Alright, now I did dig out. I may regret this. But I dug out a past, one of my pastel pencils. And it's because it's a blue. Sometimes when I'm painting and stuff on canvas... I'll do that. Let's see what we can make happen here. Man, in some ways I'm Wish I would have gotten more of these out. Kind of like that. But being that it's the blue and I don't have a lot of blue, I think I'm just going to let it be. I'm going to let it be to that. I'm ready to get something on that orange. I cannot stand that darn orange. You know, I kind of like, when I'm working with the color scheme, I like to kind of get different variations in there because it adds depth. And let me tell you where that came from. I ordered a book from the artist, uh, Allison James. And she's an abstract artist that I follow on Instagram. And she was selling a, a book. I think it was called Better Way or something Guide. So when she sent it to me, it was wrapped up real nice, and it had that orange, and I thought, well, that's fun and bright, and as you can tell, I like fun and bright, 
So I held on to the tissue paper, hoping that I could get some, some kind of use out of it. So you'll have to go check her out. She's really cool. Um, abstract artist, lives in um, Georgia. I think maybe she's located in Atlanta right now. Tell me somebody who you've been, because I, I will say she's a huge influence. Uh, not really, like my work looks absolutely nothing like hers, but man, I love listening to her, her thought process. I mean, she's just, she's my speed, uh, you know. She does a, have a podcast from time to time. And I just, her knowledge and wisdom and just how she lays it out and and, and a lot of the things that she talks about sometimes is not even really art related. I don't know. Some, you know how it is when you come across somebody who can, you just click with. But tell me somebody that you, you stay in tune with and that you like their style, you're in, you know, influenced by them, whether it's art or something else, but carries over into your art or your personality or just your lifestyle. You know, we can watch and follow all sorts of artists and not, it doesn't mean that we're copying their work or it doesn't mean that uh, we're trying to do it exactly. You know, we're just inspired by them. We want to walk alongside of them and learn and see, you know, we, we all like to connect. And it's not always easy to find so to speak, artist in your home area that you want to connect with and stuff. And so that's the beauty of working and finding people on the internet. I'll tell you a funny story. I nearly laughed at myself. Well, I say nearly. I probably did laugh at myself. I've always had a mission to, you know, really work on my YouTube channel. And sometimes life gets in the way. And anyway, so I trying to get kicked back off this this year. I, I, what do you know? I ran into internet problems. But anyway, we got that fixed this earlier this week. So, Lord, I done lost my train of thought. Oh, I know. So I was looking at my analytics here in my on my YouTube channel, and I thought, you know, the biggest thing is people. You know it. You want to make money, and then sometimes it ain't about the money, but if it came in naturally, boy, you would take it. Well, that's kind of where I'm at, you know. So, I started looking at my watch hours, so what it would be before I could get monetized and everything. Well, it's 4,000. Is that right? 4,000. And 4,000 watch hours and 100 subscribers. Well, no, a thousand subscribers, which I'm way off from a thousand. But my point of saying all that is, I thought I had gotten close to. I thought I had gotten close to my watch hours. Well, then it says it's got to be within a year's time. Honey, that's a lifetime for me. And I started this channel in like 2000 and I don't know, 13, 14, somewhere, maybe 15 or 16. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. But anyway, I am no near, nowhere near the watch hours, okay? So, that was just a funny on my own behalf. I really don't think I'm going to do too much of that blue since I did that pencil. But you see, like, how... That's paint right there. That's marker. There was some paint down here. I'm just kind of tying it all together. And then if you start paying attention, you know, there's more paint right there. And it's like you're just building on it. Building on it. Building layers. Interest. I think we may be good on that one. I, I, a lot of times we'll go over stuff with a black pen, but I don't 
I don't think I'm really ready to do that yet. I think I want to do that at the end of this process. So, all right, I'm ready to jump in here and get to working back with this paint some and try to tie all this stuff in together. Maybe even tone this down a little bit. So, let's see what we can make happen. It's kind of like with the markers. You just kind of start building on what you've got. Don't be afraid to, you know, make messes here and there, like getting something on somewhere. You just kind of just start painting loosely, and that paint will get where it needs to be. I feel like I keep bumping this thing and making it uneven for y'all, so my apologies if it's driving you crazy. And then a lot of times, if you do put paint on, some of your pieces, you know, it kind of helps tie everything together and tone down some stuff. It's like you're constantly building and pushing down and building some more and connecting. So you have things that do stand out and then put them back in the place where they belong. me up some color and kind of work with it. Continue my process of toning some stuff down. I kind of want to go for a light paint so you really don't need a lot of your darker paint because I'm going to mix it up with this white. Since I'm going for a Valentine's Day theme here, I really want to horn in on that with my pinks and so this here I'm creating on is a piece of cardboard. How often times do you get a shipment in the mail or something of a nature. I, I just I hold on to boxes because I do some reselling too, but you know, or for other shipping purposes. Well, I got a little paint on there. I want it off. Um, I don't know. I, and just kind of like how I collect stuff to be able to put in my pieces of art, or whether I'm journaling or on the canvas or on here or what. I like to work with the mixed media and the items that I come across daily in my life that I consider, you know, in a recycling purpose. And cardboard's one of them. There's no reason not to be creating on cardboard. In fact, I was talking to my mother the other day and telling her, I said, do you remember when Papa used to write little signs and put them in his Christmas tree and he would do it to label 
what year, like say if it was Christmas of 1986 or Christmas of 1989, those are just some of the years I remember, but you know, I don't, I don't remember what year he stopped, but I remember he always had that in there. And if you look back in pictures, you're going to see that. And anyway, it just dawned on me the other day how much I use cardboard, not only to create like, like I am right now, but, um, you know, through the years, you know, when people in the family's birthday rolls around and what have you, and you want to do like a little make something to celebrate and honor them, you know, if you're cooking dinner or put something by the coffee pot or what have you. Well, I have always used cardboard to make these little signs. In fact, the one for my husband for Father's Day, I just get that same one out every year. I've got one that says Happy Valentine's Day, you know, Happy Birthday, you know, you name it. Well, I got to thinking the other day when I was thinking about creating them, I remembered my granddaddy did that. He passed away in September of last year, and I guess I just was reminiscing, you know. It's crazy how after all that time, you're like, well, golly, I've been doing all this all this time, and it's something my granddaddy did, and you didn't even—I didn't even realize or put the connection until then. Look at there, that blue. Oh goodness. Oh well, that's part of it. You know, you get your supplies on your hands and your fingers, and you, you get to creating, and then it mixes all up. But hey, that's what makes art. So don't ever strive for perfection or get upset because you've made a marking honey there's there's room for it to be what it is or there's room to make it something different i'm really liking this lighter pink which i think i just got a little i like to get stuff on my my pieces of paper because that's what helps tone it down and put it in its place. Helps everything tie together. And if you, you get something somewhere and you're not real crazy about how much, just start smearing stuff around with your finger. I love this in here, but Lord, that's done. I'm toning all this down and that's dark in there. I got to do something about that. All righty. Let's get our brush cleaned up. I really want to work with a yellow. I want to get a light yellow going. Okay, I'm going to need some more of my white. I used every bit of that. I may have put too much yellow out. We'll just have to see. If you just kind of find where you've used that color before and just kind of work around it, put it on top of it, around it, near it, smear it, it kind of just ties everything into it because, you know, as you're working through the process and using other colors, some of that other color may have gotten on top of what your original color, like say I'm looking for yellow. Some other color may have gotten on there. Well, it just kind of ties it all back together. And sometimes it needs help jumping back out. And that's what you're trying to do. I like to work with dark colors. And then come back in and, and work with lighter colors. Just to kind of tone down and tie everything together. Don't be afraid to add it in places, too, that you didn't really go to begin with. Oh, 
Okay, let's see here. I'm liking some parts and some parts I'm not and that kind of thing. But a lot of times, just like earlier, if you keep working, I'm not going to put any, I'm going to keep that kind of dark. Um, and when stuff starts drying, see how I use my light and then I've decided I better come back in there with some darker yellow too. I just, you know, you just don't know until you get going. Okay, let's see what color we can work on now. Maybe just a dab of this turquoise. I'll get some stuff lightened down with it. I'm just literally going to get a bitty, bitty drop out because I'm going to use the rest of this white up. See how much we can get going here. Sometimes if you're not where to put the next mark, go back to where you were working, especially if you've dabbed your paint in some water and just kind of get it going like what I just did right there. And then you can jump off where you think you need to go next. Not being afraid to take chances is going to get you where you're supposed to be going. But if you sit back and oh, uh, this mine don't look good, or I'm I'm scared to do something else. I really am having to be careful not to get this paint, this wet paint on my sweatshirt I got on. But darn, it's cold here today. I probably should have rolled the sleeves up a little bit more. Of course, naturally, I'm liking over here better. But that doesn't always mean you need to do more. So I'm just kind of evaluating to see what needs to be done. Sometimes if you just go back over and drag around on some of your wet paint, stuff will get where it's supposed to be going. You gotta be that helper. Help the process along the way. I'll put a dab of orange. Use this last little bit of white Some of this brown, I feel like I didn't get much of it in my color palette. But I end up with the most messes.
Okay, friends, I think, I think as far as painting, I want to leave it at that, and then after it dries, come back in here and do my doodling with my pen and stuff. I still don't like over here, but I'm liking other aspects, so I feel like maybe once that dries, maybe some things will get better for me. I really think it was that darn orange tissue paper. Get them maybe mad in there. Okay, I'm going to end it right there. And when it dries, I'll be back. It may be tomorrow, but... You're not going to know that's tomorrow. <laughs> well, if I tell you, you will. As you can tell here, on this day, I was pleased more with this dried results. And I didn't particularly talk to you as I created not necessarily because I didn't want to, but two reasons I thought you might would enjoy kind of not having me talk over the whole entire thing, which you're probably thinking, well, why are you talking right now? But then secondly, well, I am going to quit talking in a minute, but the real true reason why I didn't talk over this section um, while I was filming was my daughter came into my studio and she had the dog with her and everything, and they were playing and talking, and I never, ever want my family to feel like that they can't be around me when I'm creating or if I'm filming or whatever. I just know that I will not be using the audio from that day, and I'm perfectly okay with that. My time in the studio and my artwork is how I have literally raised my children it is a big staplement in my life, and I am more of a part-time artist versus full-time because I'm a full-time homemaker and have been for almost 20 years now. I recently shared one day with my daughter about, well, first, let me tell you about those little dots I'm doing right now those that I'm doing with the blue because I just felt like enough blue was not peeping through. So anyway, those little dots, I did get the inspiration from the piece I showed you back in the very beginning of this video whenever I was pulling things from my art journal and my paint palette and everything. And I showed you the one piece that I found on Pinterest. Um, it had some little black dots, so to speak in it and that's where I've got the idea for that. So going back to what I told my daughter recently, I told her that I had started filming and editing my videos again one day when she had come home from class and I was telling her, I said, I'm, I'm doing it so maybe if I ever started making money from it that uh, it could be for my retirement. And we both just laughed, and she was like, whatever, Mom. But, you know, hey, it's a thought. Even though I spent a lot of time uh, piling on some lighter colors, I am retracting and, and backtracking and, and going back to the darker shades just to... Um, adds a little more detail and depth. As you can tell, it's starting to pull things together and what I'll call add that pop that needs to be happening at the end here. And ultimately reaching that feeling of being finished. I used that bowl of water there with that sponge to get some white going. That sponge is actually very full of water, so it is 
toning down that white and just kind of tying everything in together. I use this process a lot whenever I'm creating on canvas. Okay, so as I told you a few minutes ago, I am going to stop talking and let you just enjoy what I continue doing here. And I'll catch back up with you in a few minutes. This is definitely a piece, if you saw it in person, you'd be amazed by all the layers and markings and texture and what have you. And that's why I'm excited to think about the fact of you creating something of your own so you can see the, the magical moment of getting to that end creative process. As you can see, I'm still tinkering and I will be for a few more minutes, so I'm going to let you enjoy that process. But this video is going to be wrapping up soon, but once I get through doing a little tinkering and what have you, you will see at the end of this video where I take some pictures still while at my desk here working, and then I move it over to my windowsill where... I usually utilize the natural light coming in to take pictures. I wanted you to be able to see that process because like I said in the beginning of this video, this video is literally my process from start to finish. It's been an honor to have you join me. Until the next video, and let me just tell you, it will not be this long of a video. It will not be every single little step that I do. I learned from making this video of just how much footage this was and it's been really difficult trying to break it down without it being so annoying but yet trying to really uh, capture everything so you can see the the full deal. Um, but anyway so then the next video I, I have already started creating and filming 
and again it includes hearts i think you will be excited about it as well i'll see you then